Welcome, embroidery friends. I'm Eileen Roach, the founder of Designs of Machine Embroidery, and thank you for joining me today. We have a fun broadcast in today's session. We're going to talk all about ditching the shine, which is a pretty rare statement for a machine embroiderer to embrace. But I'm going to show you some reasons why matte thread, you know, is the right choice for specific fibers or maybe specific garments and also gifts. So before we get started, you know, sign in, let me know where you're calling, where you're watching from. We have a couple of folks in uh, Massachusetts. Welcome. And uh, also up in Connecticut. And hello, Alicia Gentry. How are you? And the whole OML gang. Always great to see all of you here. Uh, in today's program, we always start with the doors, uh, not the doors, not the doors. I've confused myself because I'm going to show you a couple doors from last year, but with the small town charms. And as you remember, uh, in January, we started with these uh, free downloads that are available to anyone that's, you know, comes to our website. They're uh, welcome to download either the 7x12 or the 5x7. And uh, that was January, which was a quilt shop, one of our favorite places to visit, right? And then we followed up in February with the quilt shop. No, the bake shop. Oh, I have the, the PowerPoint slide is incorrect, but it's the sweet shop for sure, right? Because who wouldn't like to go to the quilt shop in, you know, uh, for a visit and then stop in and have a little sweet treat at a sweet shop, whether that's a bakery or a candy store. And then in March, it was so chic, a ladies dress shop, handbags, accessories, and so many of you did absolutely stunning renditions of the, of the So Chic, and I have, was so impressed. We found just one, though, this week, and that's Sharon Crowder. So she has a, used a really bright red fabric, a fun batik for her awning. Well, I love it, and of course, her sidewalk looks just like sidewalk. She chose a thread that really pops, it really stands out from the, um, the kind of soft toned fabric that she chose for her wall, the inside. And so that kind of diamond pattern. And when I created this design, I said, that's the wallpaper pattern. So she did a, a design that, you know, a thread color that really pops. Well done, very nice. Love the blue dress, love the blue dress. And it matches the blue handbag over on the table. Isn't that wonderful? Hello, Isabel Brian from France. Thanks for joining us today, our friends from across the pond. I hope everyone in France is doing well. Boy, we're trying to get through this COVID, aren't we? I hear much of Europe is, uh, you know, in another lockdown and uh, here in Texas, it's a little different than that, but um, we're powering through and looking forward to brighter days ahead. Well, since yesterday was St. Patrick's Day, I thought it would be fun to revisit a couple of the doors that many of you did last year. That's This is last year's free design. Every month we downloaded a free door design. And as you can see here, many people customize them to their own. So Beach Mama Flowers, she chose a beautiful green fabric for her house. I love that, that fabric. It's just stunning. And her shamrock is outstanding. She's got a fun balance, a colorful balance. And then Ayn McCarthy, one, she is uh, one of our inspiration consultants here at Dime. She does a lot of our classes on um, all kinds of, um, you know, software and quilting and lace and boy, you name it. She's a very talented lady. So her name, of course, her married name is McCarthy and her maiden name is Lehigh. So I think that the March door last year really hit a nerve with her because she, um, you know, put both of their names on it. And then we had Eugenia Waddle Wingington, who on the left-hand side, look what she did. Those um, little vines of shamrocks just, you know, falling out, climbing out of those, uh, I think they're hats, uh, upside down hats or urns, but they're just beautiful. She put a monogram on the top of the door and then she changed her shamrock and used someone else's version of a shamrock, which is just beautiful. It's really very lovely. 
and a, she put her address on the bottom of the door. I mean, I think it's her address, not sure if it's her address or somebody else's. And then Beverly Betts, she did a, a kind of a subdued, you know, what would be very realistic, I think, of a, an Irish family's door. So she chose a um, pretty colorful fabric for her valance, and then she put her pooch on the front step. That is adorable, really well done. Well, today we want to talk about ditching that shine. And I guess you're wondering what I think the two most recognizable uses or the most common uses of matte thread are. And you might be wearing them right now. Levi's, for sure. All that beautiful top stitching is all a matte thread. No shine on your blue jeans, right? If you go with the standard Levi. And then the other is baseballs right another part of our american heritage so we are known for um that um, well we're not known for it but you know baseballs have that red stitching right in uh, right on the ball itself and i guess i'm my I, i'm jumping my, ahead of myself so forgive me a great use for these matte threads is menswear just like you know you know, these blue jeans were really invented for men. There was men's wear, you know, for work gear. And, uh, but, you know, ladies soon found how wonderful and comfortable and useful they are. And now they're so fashionable, absolutely so fashionable. Hello, Dory from Naples. Nice to see you here. I think it's a nice day down here, down in Naples. I, um, my, you know, I have family down that way in South Florida. So I always get a, um, an update on how beautiful the weather is. So, but good for them, happy for them. So for menswear, you know, it's often flannel. It can be canvas or duck for accessories. And so, you know, a matte thread looks beautiful when paired with those types of fabrics for sure. And acid wash t-shirts, you know, that have that real soft kind of aged feel. They are also a great candidate for a matte thread. So, you know, a lot of guys don't want to wear, you know, bling or most certainly, you know, well, some of them do like to wear bling, but many men, you know, especially in casual wear, they just want a kind of a, a plain look. But I think this would appeal to just about everyone for sure. Okay, so let's see. Here's my baseball, finally. So, you know, little boys, it's so hard to embroider and create gifts for little boys. But, you know, that baseball theme, you can, if you if that family likes baseball, boy, you can really build on that theme. So I have a couple ideas to show for you. Here's a diaper cake that I made for a baby shower. And this little boy was um, a long time coming for this young couple. And uh, so that was the theme, worth the wait. And our little slugger. And But take a look at the center patch where uh, the AW, that's his initials. And I used a uh, applique font that's in our software. And I just added some of that um, baseball stitching to the font. And I'm going to show you how to do that in a minute. But before we do it, I just thought I'd show you how much fun I had with uh, this whole little shower gift and, uh, you know, the bag and the pennants and so forth. Oh, they just loved it. And that's just crushed brown paper in the popcorn container, you know, that uh, is the kind of centerpiece of the diaper cake. So fun, really fun. Okay, so I want to go over to uh, software and show you how uh, how I did this. So let's see. I have you know I have too many mice here, right? All my all my mice's mouses. <laughs> okay, so let's head over to software, and this font is our high school applique font. So you know from your drop down menu. You would just select the high school applique. If you don't, you know, if you can't remember the name, you can always click on the icon of the fonts, and then you will see all of the fonts that are in the software, um, you know, that come with the software. And I'm in Perfect Embroidery Pro, which of course is powered by Embroidery Toolshed. So at the top of the bar, you can see it says Embroidery Toolshed. But down here in the sh in the shopping cart, I have my Perfect Embroidery Pro selected as my default. So if you are wondering, you know, why mine says Embroidery Toolshed, that's why. 
It's powered by Embroidery Toolshed. So I have already selected the uh, text tool, typed AW in the properties box. You can see it right there. And then I took the run uh, stitch icon and I just drew some curves. So here, I'll go ahead and draw another one. Now I'm holding down the control key so that I get a slight curve instead of just a straight line. And now you can see that all of those run stitches, well, they'll come in as the same color as your applique, but I had already selected all of the run stitches and turned them into red by just uh, left clicking on the color chip and that makes them red. So now let's go up to the type of run stitch and this is in the properties box and I will now select motif. And once that's selected, I then use this drop down arrow to view all of my choices. And 129 looks just like baseball. And there you have it. Now it's kind of big, right? A little too big. And first off, let's get rid of the one that I just drew because that's a little too much. So now let's uh, change the pattern size. It's at 10.0 and let's go down to a six and, and hit apply. Now that's looking a little more pleasing. We'll turn on the realistic view. Oh, we have some problems, right? So now my baseball stitching is going to stitch over my applique. We don't want that. That's not desirable. So what I'm going to do is, and this is just a best practice, I'm selecting all of those baseball stitches, right-clicking, and group. And that way, they'll all move as one unit. Now I'm going to select the applique. And here, if I open that up, you can see it's uh, text, but it's actually applique. So then I'm going to do break up text. And now I need to actually break up the applique here, break up path. And now I can place my, um, my running stitches, my baseball stitches. Oh, I grouped it. Now I probably shouldn't have done that. And so we will put that right after the tack down. And so now you can see they're behind the tack down. I can take the time to um, work on, you know, the placement. If that looks a little bit too large, we can ungroup that and work on each one individually, like that one should probably come in just a little bit. And here, let's play with that size so you can see just how drastic it can get. So now I'm at 6.0, remember we were at 10. So if you wanna see what these settings really do, make a drastic change. Like I'm gonna go down to two and see what happens. And now you can see just how tiny that is. So we started at 10, right? too big for this application. And now we'll go back down to six or, you know, let's look at it at five. You don't have to be satisfied. You can keep tweaking until you're satisfied with it. But isn't that easy? So fun. So fun. Yep. Okay. I think that's, oh, now we're going to take a look at this beautiful letter O and I want to show you what we can do with it over at the machine. But before we get to the machine, let's head over to the overhead cam. So you can see some other uses for matte thread. Like you can do lace in matte thread. It doesn't have to be shiny. This is a trim here that was purchased, this line. This is all stitched in my lace maker software, but this line of trim is a matte. It's kind of, it's a linen finish. So the best thing to pair with that would be a matte finish of thread. And so here's another, Selection. Now I have all these trims. I love this uh, Tim Holtz. Boy, he's got really cool stuff. Wouldn't you agree? He's very into the scrapbook scene. So into the big box stores, you often find a lot of offerings from him with his name on it, ideology. And all, most of his trims are going to be a mat. And so they pair beautifully with the mat threads. Here's another linen look. Um, trim and then here's old school kind of crocheted and here I have this on a garment So let's take a look at that garment so you can see this is that beautiful 
matte finished thread that I stitched and then that's the trim. And I just created a border to define that, make it a wider presentation on the garment so that it wasn't so skinny and narrow. This is a big loose tunic, so it works well with that. Now, what about wool? That bag that I showed you just a moment ago, here is a garment that I did several years ago that I used matte thread for because this wool and raw edge, these hand dyed wool fabrics and felts, oh, I love this garment. It might make me want to stay in a cold country, a cold state, but probably not, probably not. I could wear it, you know, on a cold day uh, in a warm town somewhere, right? Okay, so let's take, I have some other treasures on here, under here to share with you. Here are some interesting trims. Again, on, you know, you can buy whole sets of these flat trims. These cards of trim are kind of dated, but I know that they still appeal to a lot of fiber artists where you get a unique combination in a colorway of different yarns with different weights and textures. Well, when I use um, couch over yarns like this, I don't want to add shine to that. I want to use a matte thread. And so I have an example of that here. And you can see that I've already started this. So this is a quilted sample that's um, all these beautiful textures. And I used a pretty purple matte thread to stitch all of the quilting. And then I'm going to define those shapes by couching right over the outline. You know what? I might have a little bit more fun. I might do some free motion couching and add it in these swirly areas or maybe outline the heart a couple times. You know, so it's just another way to you know, elevate quilting or just, you know, garment pieces. You don't have to do the whole jacket, but you might want to just do like part of a yoke or a jacket back. That would really add some interest to um, a garment. But what about baker's twine, right? It's really popular at Christmas to use baker's twine. And here is a little cross stitch box that I made in software, you know, just in our Perfect Diverger Pro, all you have to do is Draw a box, right click, convert to cross stitch, and you have something that looks like handwork. And then I just framed that applique by couching over the baker's twine. Love baker's twine. It kind of gives you a retro Christmas feel. So that's a fun, another use for matte thread because, you know, cross stitch is done with DMC floss normally, which is a matte finish. We don't normally see that with any kind of sheen. But let's see, the real cream of the crop, I think, is monogramming in a matte thread. Just want you to take a look at how lush that fullness is. I mean, that is just gorgeous. And even though it's flat, it, it's still very appealing. It really looks like old world embroidery. It's, it's just, I, I just love that. But I have a sample that I want to show you. I kind of gave you a glimpse on the PowerPoint where I added silk ribbon to outline that monogram. And I do it from the back and I'm going to do it on the machine, show you how to do it. But isn't that fun? It just adds so much texture to it. Really looks like handwork because it's not perfect, which is fine with me. Perfect is overrated, folks. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, you can really stress out trying to achieve perfection, right? So before we go to the machine, why don't we take a look at all the fun colors? So these quartets are coming in, you know, obviously four in a pack. They're only $10 for each group, each group. So you, we split up the earth tones and here's all of your pretty selections for the earth tones. Aren't they beautiful? And then on the brights, we have a, a really fun collection too. Here's kind of like an Easter pack and uh, this says, you know, nautical to me, and I don't know, they're just really, really fun. And then, of course, the pastels, a lot of them say spring and Easter also, but just adorable. I guess I'm missing one pack of the brights uh, that would have the red and greens in it. But anyway, you can find that on our website. Great purchase, great buys today, $10. You can really play. Get to know these threads. You don't need a special needle. You're going to match your needle to your th to your fabric. 
because this is the 40 weight version of the matte thread that we're offering right now. So that's the same size as your traditional um, embroidery threads. And, uh, and Arnell, can you use it on the serger? You most certainly can use it on the serger. And someday soon, if I ever get 10 minutes, well, maybe more than 10 minutes, um, I'm gonna get on my new Baby Lock Triumph serger and play with those matte threads because I love that look. And I know some of those great Baby Lock educators have taught how you could do cr crochet edging on your serger. And I would like to do that in the matte thread because I think that would give it a more realistic look, which I just love, yeah. Oh, hi, Joanne Banco. Thanks for joining us today. Oh, and you do have some of those exact same trim cards. Yeah, I have a whole little, little tub of really fun, pretty colors. I just love that stuff, you know. Uh, it, and it's really handy to collect those types of cards of fibers. And this is what she's talking about. Where, where do I have that? Um, here, we'll look at this kind of mossy green one. You know, you just never know when you need that dark kind of khaki green and a soft moss and, and you know, a yarn. You'd be amazed. At, you know, these last a long time. I don't remember what they cost, but they, you know, sometimes you only need like a foot, right? You just, you know, we do little things here, right? Little things. So don't sweat it, sweat it out. And, you know, you're, you're kind of like a painter who always has enough paint, right? So you need your fibers, your, um, your, your especially yarns and so forth are the, your tools of the trade. And, you know, as you fill your stash, then you always have the right things to go to when you want to add a special touch to something for sure. Uh, and uh, let's see. So uh, Joanne Banco, she's talking about a menswear garment uh, that we did a long time ago in the magazine. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was. Menswear, you know, and then sometimes you'd have to have a male model. Well, that was interesting, but, you know. Anyway, that's a whole topic. Okay, let's go over to the machine. Let's check it out. So I'm gonna um, tell you how to set it up, which I thought I printed out, but I didn't. Okay, that's all right. So here's our sample. And this is how we wanna finish it. We're gonna, we've already embroidered our O here on this felt. And I have wound my silk ribbon on a bobbin. Now you will want to, did I lose sound? Uh, you will want to cut your um, ribbon at a, at a you know, exaggerated angle so you can feed it through that little hole on the bobbin. And then just wind it slowly and guide the, the silk ribbon through your hand as it spins on the uh, bobbin winder. And then place it in the bobbin case and do not put it through the tension. So you can see here, it's not through the tension. It's not in that little guide. And I am going to hold my top thread, drop that needle, and pull up that silk ribbon to the top. Now, hold on to the bobbin case, because you know it wants to just fly right out of there, right? It just, you know, right out of the bobbin case. And you don't really want that because uh, you waste a lot of, there's no tension on it. You would waste a lot of the bobbin thread. And put your bobbin case back on. Now I have changed my my throat my plate to a single you know a single needle throat plate, so it can only accommodate a straight stitch, and that just allows the ribbon to flow through the plate without kind of wiggling back and forth, and that's what you want. And then you're going to select the straight stitch here on the Solaris, it's 103, and which is the center straight stitch, and we're gonna change the length to uh, 3.0. So you want a nice, you know, long length. Now, grab hold of that ribbon tail in the back and slide your fabric underneath, and maybe you can't, you know, if the tail's not long enough, you, you can fuss with it in a moment and catch up, make sure you're just holding onto it for a moment. And then I am centering the letter right underneath the presser foot to, so that my needle will insert into the absolute edge of the monogram. So we want to stitch right along the edge. And actually, if you stitch it into the monogram, not so horrible. You'll see. Not so horrible. I wasn't perfect. Let's look on the wrong side. 
I did a pretty good job. I did run over the monogram here, but everywhere else I just ran, I was able to follow the guide of the outline and stitch. Now, when you're looking for a monogram, you want a nice wide column. You don't want anything too skinny. You don't want anything that's going to crisscross over itself too much. Like um, P's and R's can be a little challenging. So play with your fonts on your selection. Now I set my speed down to the slowest and my machine now is at a counter height, but ideally I would have it, uh, I would be sitting down and I would use my knee lift to stop and start the machine. So we're just going to ever so slowly travel around that outside. Now what you have to remember is this is a long stitch length. So the fabric is actually feeding a little bit more distance than is really comfortable, you know, but that's okay. It's all right. And then we can speed it up a little bit, probably. You just want to make sure you're staying right there, right along the edge. And occasionally you'll just kind of lift that presser foot if you need to. And keep your press the needle down when you are turning for sure so that you don't lose your space. And here you can see that my yarn is coming out the end. That's perfect because you do want to keep an eye on it because you don't want to stitch across it like if it was caught underneath. You know, everything's happening on the, on the right side and you are viewing from the wrong side. So, but I do love this look. It's really a tender, tender look so delicate really mimics hand work but we're going to be done this in absolutely you know just a couple minutes it doesn't take very long at all and speeding up a little bit now i have tear away stabilizer on here i'm not so sure i like the tear away you don't really need anything i'm, I'm stitching on felt so which is a nice sturdy fabric if i was on a cotton or a linen then I would definitely use the tear away. Um, whatever it is, you probably don't want to use a cutaway if it's a sheer type fabric, like a linen. You know, some linens can be sheer. And so we're just going to kind of keep going. And, you know, the tricky part is when we get to the other point of that O. Well, here I went off a little bit. So I'm just going to kind of work my way back into the edge of that monogram. Stitch along. It's fun. Now my thread that I'm using matches my ribbon, which is what you want to do. You don't want to match the fabric. You want to match the ribbon. Now I'm going to swing it all the way around and we're going to come back. Now, now we're getting a little tighter in here. So of course, you know, if you were, if you had digitized this and you were going around this curve, you would have short stitches here so that you could keep the the fluidity, the fluidity of the curve, uh, but because we are basting, you know, yeah, it's a little bit harder in that tight curve there. So keep that in mind when you are selecting a font. Really, really tight curves can be um, almost too challenging. So, you know, if you're just beginning, if this is your first time, do something simple, like maybe the letter N, or even just stitch some straight lines. You know, do a border or, you know, if you have an initial that is quite complicated, don't outline the monogram with the silk ribbon. Instead, create a frame of like in a circle or a rectangular pattern and just um, stitch the silk ribbon around the frame. And that would be a great solution. You know, if you have uh, like the letter G or something that has some inside loops that, are, that might be too challenging. Okay, so we're just coming up to get there. And it really is so much easier if you're using the knee lift or you wouldn't have to be reaching back and gathering, uh, trying to, you know, raise the presser foot. Now I am just going to cross right to the other side and now you don't want to cut the silk ribbon. You just want to raise that presser foot 
and drag it out because you want a nice tail there. You can trim that back thread and then, and then there you have it. So then we will take a needle, which I swear I have somewhere, a big needle, and thread that onto the needle and work it to the back and just tie that off. Let me see if I have my long needle here. Oh, I don't know where it is now. <laughs> oh, here it is. Yeah. Okay. So we would just, you know, thread that through and then feed that to the back. There we go, and there's one tail, and then we'll do it to the other, and then we'll literally tie them off. And it's hard to see this. Oh my goodness, I used to be able to thread a needle, and this is so gribbon, and this eye is huge. Oh well, and you probably don't want to watch me do this, but you get the drift, right? And then in the back, we would just tie them off together. Trim them, and there is your pretty monogram. How fun is that? Don't we have so much fun? I'm telling you, it's just, you know, those machines, they're amazing. What we can do between the software and the fibers that we own, and then the machine, the ability of the machine. And often we forget that these beautiful embroidery machines also sew. And there's a lot, and you know, I'm just doing a straight stitch, a basting stitch. But, you know, you could experiment with that. This machine comes with, uh, you know, designs that you can actually use bobbin, you know, do bobbin work with. I personally haven't experimented with that yet, but, you know, it's there. It's there when we want it, right? So that was super fun. I enjoyed that. And, you know, that is one this. We published this in 2011. So this um, technique has been around a, a, quite a while. Ten years now. Wow. 10 years. That's amazing. July, August. And, you know, we, I really had a lot of fun making that, um, that tablecloth. It was a tablecloth surrounded by those pretty flowers. Aren't they beautiful? They really are. And in it, you know, we had some, the same tips that I just shared, just slow down your machine, turn off the trimmers. If your machine will allow you to do that, or just do not engage them at the end because it will cut that silk ribbon right at the you know right next to the stitching and, and then you won't be able to pull it to the back so that's kind of a bummer yeah and um let's see wendy you say it looks easier to do with a drop-in bobbin when you have a bobbin case and have to play with the screw well i did not put the silk ribbon through the bobbin case so it didn't matter what bobbin case i was using i didn't have to adjust the screw, the tension on the bobbin case. I just completely bypassed the tension. So no worries about that. Mm -hmm. And yeah, here's my teammate saying, if you have a bobbin ca case, it's recommended to have a second bobbin case. So if you wanna change the tension, absolutely. That's very good advice. But again, I didn't even put it in the tension, so I didn't have to do that. And let's see, Sharon, you said, I have all my issues and go over them every once in a while to get issues and inspiration oh, of the magazine. Oh, I'm so happy to hear that. Oh, uh, thank you. I love hearing that. That's really kind. Um, yes, because, you know, there's pages and pages of inspiration there. And I sometimes go back or, you know, I come up with a thought and then I'm like, wait, did we already do that? And, you know, I'm trying to re work it out in my mind how you do it. And then I can go back to the magazine and say, oh, yeah, we already know how to do that. So that's really fun. And Isabel Brian, oh, third confinement begins tomorrow. Well, you will have more time for embroidery. So embrace that and make the best of your time at home. And we wish you, uh, you know, safe, safe days over there in France, for sure, for sure. Let's see, any other questions? Joanne Banco, you do beautiful bobbin work. I know you did a beautiful gar garment for the magazine several years ago and oh boy, her work's just outstanding. Just so much fun. Well, next week we're going to talk about, we're gonna stay in the matte thread um, you know, phase because we're gonna do boho necklines next week. So that'll be super fun. And then the following week, right, is when it is the door. Oh no, we gotta do that next week. Oh my, okay. 
we're short a day. Well, we'll be ready. We'll be ready for the, not the door. It won't be a door. It'll be the small town charm. And last week, you know, a couple of weeks ago, you gave me some good ideas. So do you have any more ideas? Okay. What size needle, ribbon, width, and brand? All right. So let's take a look at that. The ribbons, uh, the width of the silk ribbon should be four millimeters. That I remember. And this is made by River Silks. And they're located in Kirkland, uh, let's see, Kirkland, um, Washington. And their website is riversilks.com. It's teeny tiny text, but that's what it says. Let me see if I can get it so that you don't, there we go. Uh, riversilks.com. This is four millimeter wide. And let me show you something that's really nice about this silk ribbon. Look at the card that it's on. They have these rounded edges. They're like kind of, kind of like a lollipop stick, right? So you don't get a hard bend on, like I have some other silk ribbon that is a card, just a card. And so I have really sharp um, folds in the silk ribbon. But I will tell you, first thing I do is I unravel this and I take it to the ironing board and I press the whole length. And it takes, it took me about two and a half yards of silk ribbon to go around that letter O. So um, it, it takes quite a bit, you know, but on the other hand, you're not going to do this for so many different, um, you, you're just, you know, you're not going to do like whole words like this, I wouldn't think. It's just, you know, one element that you would accent. So even though it took two and a half yards of silk ribbon to do on the inside and the outside, I think it was worth it. And uh, so it is 100% silk. That's very important because that's going to give you that supple flow that it, it's so soft and it will go around the bobbin very well. It won't uh, kink or twist. Now, when I am putting it on the bobbin, I do hold it between my fingers and guide it. And it's a little tricky to get started. I can tell you that because, um, you know, the bobbin is on, on the baby lock, the bobbin sits on top of the machine and the control is down at the bottom of the screen. And you, you need a third hand because you're holding on to the top of the bobbin. Here, I'll bring one over so you can see what I mean. Uh, here's my, oh, this other, oh, we'll put that there. So you're going to hold on to the silk ribbon that you brought through to the top. So can you see right here that there's that hole in the bobbin case and you feed the tail through that and hold the tail. So you really need two hands because you want to hold the tail and guide the ribbon. So it, you know, it, you, you can make it work and just stop it. Once it gets started, just stop it. So you can relax everything. You can trim this excess at the top and then continue to hold this. And frankly, I, I hold a pretty firm grip on the ribbon guide and my machine actually stopped and said, you know, the bobbin, the bobbin is engaged, do you, do you want to continue? And then I would just say, yes, continue, because I didn't want it to twist and so forth. I like it to get on there nice and flat. So it's pretty easy. And then, uh, let's see, and then this, this needle, is just a large eye needle, some hand needle. You know, hand's a four letter word to me, so I know nothing about hand needles. It's not very sharp. It's probably some kind of doll or something needle. Who knows what it is? And I'm sure you be, you ladies who do beading and do cross stitch and, you know, beautiful hand embroidery, you know way more about those details than I do. So ask each other. <laughs> Yeah, let's see. Uh, Judy Whitaker, you got your March done. You got your small town charm done. Well, you, I thought I already saw yours, Judy. Maybe not, maybe not, but I'll look for it and we'll get it up here next week if you haven't already. Um, what other brands are? There are some other uh, silk ribbon brands, but you know, kind of hard to find these things. Tapestry needles, thank you, Joanne Banco. Thank you so much, tapestry needles, probably what that is. Um, it's kind of hard to find this stuff anymore, but I guess online you can find all those supplies. 
So um, we don't have any more questions. I think I'm going to bow out and say goodbye for today. And we look forward to seeing you here next week. We're going to have a lot of fun talking about t-shirts and how to finish those necklines. One of my favorite topics. And we will reveal the next small town charm. Thanks for joining me today.